Hey, this is Don from Padlock Technologies again with another video. This time we're going to do a brief overview of security fabric feature in uh, Fortinet, which is you know unique to Fortinet. I think it's pretty cool. Um, at least when I say unique to Fortinet, the way they do it, everybody has a security fabric now, but they do it a little bit differently. So the reason why this took so long, because I actually had to get live gear. So I went and bought a 48 firewall, a Forti switch, and a 48P, but stupidly, I bought an AP that wasn't uh, PoE, and I did not have a PoE injector, so I had to wait and go buy another PoE AP, and now we have this simple lab. Now, what this basically is, is if we go to Security Fabric here, and we go to Fabric Connector, you will see that I have three things in the in the fabric here. So I have a FortiGate, Forti Switch. For the AP. Now I didn't register the other two devices, but the Forda gate is registered. So now what happens is when you register these devices, they will show up in this uh, Wi-Fi switch controller. So basically now the Forda gate firewall is not just a firewall, it is a controller. Sort of like you know, for the APs, like you have a WLC in the Cisco world. Now the APs actually do a cat back tunnel to the Forda gate firewall and it treats it as a separate interface. With the Forda switches. You just plug it in, you make sure you use the dedicated link. So if we go to network here and we look at our interfaces, we have a dedicated Forda link um, interface. Now this is says A and B. I just have A plugged in right now because it's a 40, it's a S, I think a 60F. You plug it into this port, it has DHCP because you see the DHCP range here. And then you plug it into the switch. Once you do that, it'll get something out of this DHCP range. That's why you see the one here, because it's the, the managed Forda switch. And then you can actually manage the Forda switch ports from the Forda gate. Same thing with the AP here. So I have an AP management network, and I have one AP here. And it's going to get something out of this 192.168.40 range. Once I plug it in, now I can go to manage Forda switches. And then boom, my Forda switch came up. I did some up updates and stuff like that to see, hey, you know, I was on an old version of code. So as soon as I plugged it in, it was like, hey, you need to upgrade the code. So I did that perfectly fine. Let me see if anything from a topology standpoint, you can see I'm coming from this Forda 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 gate firewall. I don't know why I'm having a slip of the tongue here. And then I'm going to this Forda port 48 on the Forda switch. All right. Now, from the AP standpoint, this is in port three. So once I, and you can see it here, port three. Once I plug this into port three and then connected it up to this AP management VLAN that's on the port switch port, which I'll show you in a minute, it got registered. And now my AP, I can manage my AP and anything that from an SSID standpoint, I can do here. And then, it, like I said, it treats it like a separate interface where I can make security policies and stuff like that. Now the benefit of this is once you start getting to like tagging and things like that, once it either plugs in or gets on the wireless, everything within the security fabric knows about it, right? Sort of like with, you know, ICE and PX Grid, you plug into the network, that session, that contextual information is spread towards everything in the security fabric, everything that's doing PX Grid. The difference here is you don't have to do PX Grid to do it, right? So again, gives you the same sort of functionality without needing extra things to, to share that contextual information. Now, from a port standpoint, once you got the switch in there, now you can come in here and really configure all your ports, right? You can configure for the VLANs, anything you want to do. Now, I will tell you, when I first seen this, this was a little confusing here, right? Because I was like, native VLAN, allow VLANs, what are these all, trunk lanes, stuff like that. Again, when you're coming from Cisco world, when you see stuff like this, native VLAN, allow VLANs, you automatically think, oh, this is a trunk port, right? Just burns in your head, right? But it's not. So what I did on port three is I edited, you really only need to edit this, the native VLAN part, but I edited the native VLAN to put it on the AP management network. And then once my once the AP got plugged in, it was able to get an IP address. And that interface has this thing called security fabric connection. And that's what you need to actually register your devices. If that feature isn't turned on, you will not be able to manage it. I'll show you. I'll go back to network and show you what I was talking about. And then everything else is basically corporate VLAN, which is VLAN 10. From a trunk port perspective, I have one trunk port. 
and that's port one that's linked to the firewall, right? This is not using the Forda link, right? This is using a normal trunk link and the allow VLANs here are gonna be my AP management network and VLAN, which is VLAN 40 and then VLAN 10, right? That allows me, if I plug in, I'll be on VLAN 10. If I connect to wireless, I'm gonna be on VLAN 40 technically, all right? And you can tell that from or the 40 client, you see I have a 45, that's my one of my PCs back there. And you see I have a 45 address, right? And all my traffic is basically getting tunneled back to this firewall and going out to the internet, basically. Now, from the Forda switch perspective, here's the VLANs that I created, right? These one, two, three, four are by default, and then you, uh, these are the ones I created. So I created AP management and then uh, corporate LAN just as a test, all right? So now that that's there, now I'm trunking everything back to the firewall. Remember I told you right here from the interface standpoint, this fabric connection, right? Oh, where's that? Here we go. So my AP network, right? Fabric connection, that's for the APs just to get on the network. And this corporate one is just for, you know, you can plug into the LAN and stuff like that. Once that's done, now, one thing that I, I'm not, I'm not going to make this too long of a video because there's other features. This is just a broad overview of it. This NAC policy part I thought was pretty cool. Now, I'm still playing around with this. I have not matched any devices yet, but this is simple NAC. This is a built-in NAC on the firewall. This is not for the NAC. This is definitely not something that's similar to ICE or for the NAC. So if you think that you're gonna get that type of granularity and those cool features that you would get in a normal NAC appliance, just get that idea out your head. That's not happening, all right? But if you wanna create policies, like I'm testing out some wireless policies and a MAP policy here. So basically, I got it enabled. It's on all the four switches for now. And the category, you can match these categories here. And I'm just doing something simple like, all right, it's a device, what do we want to do? Match the, the Mac. I can do the hardware vendor device family if I wanted to OS. And then what do you do? I'm going to assign it to this corporate LAN, right? If it was wireless, I would assign it to, and I do have a wireless policy here that I haven't tested out yet. I would assign it to the this well, uh, VLAN. It's actually the Ford Lab, right? So when you create your SSID, it also creates this as well, all right? Now, I have not tested this out, but this is a simple way to give yourself some network access control without actually buying the appliance. And I think that's that's pretty cool. From the security fabric standpoint, they do have some automation stuff that I have not messed with yet. So from an automations perspective, you have triggers, you have actions, and you, they got this thing called Stitch, right? I think that's Stitch. So you would create your trigger, whatever trigger that is, and then you would create a specific action, whatever action you want that to be, quarantine, whatever that is. And then you would stitch those together to say, okay, if this trigger happens, take this action on whatever device you want to do it on FortiGate, whatever it is. So again, I think that's pretty cool, right? That you can have some automation. I say this is similar to a remediation instance and correlation rule in, in a secure firewall. I say those, this is basically the same thing, right? But they just call it something different. And You'll notice that as you go through these firewalls, they all do the same thing. They just call it something different and they configure it something, they configure it differently. Now, from a policy perspective, remember I told you that, you know, the cat web, when you do APs and all that, it treats it as a separate interface. So here's my Forda Lab internet rule that I was talking about. And as you can see, it treated it as a different interface. So this Forda Lab is technically the SSID, right? So all I said was, hey, it's coming from, you know, Forda Lab, which is the wireless, going to outside the WAN for these clients. All This is a really crappy rule, but I did it for testing. This is just allowing AP, anything that goes on the Forda Lab SSID to get out to the internet. That's basically all that is. And then the SourceNet rule is doing the same thing. Basically, if it's coming from Fortinet Lab, go to WAN for these clients. This is technically a uh, interface net, so it just translates it out to the interface. But the cool thing is it treats it like a separate interface. So if I wanted to create policies, because since corporate LAN and technically Fortinet SSID or Fortinet Lab SSID are not in the same subnet, 
I would have to create a rule that says, hey, for the lab, SSID or whoever's on that, if they want to talk to corporate researchers, I have to allow that, right? I'm not just dumping them on the corporate VLAN and then wireless, you know, clients just automatically talk to, you know, corporate clients. Nope, I'm going to force it by a rule. Now, you can bridge it if you want to, but that's really up to you. And then the last thing I'll show you guys is the SSID creation. So here's what I did for the SSID. Now, <laughs> it was funny. I called it for the lab. I named it for the lab. So I thought that was the SSID. That is not the SSID. That is just something for you, right? So here's the, the subnet mask. And then we have to have DHCP because I'm tunneling this traffic back to the FortiGate. So anybody that gets this, as you saw, the client that I had got a uh, IP address out of this subnet. Then this is where you actually call the SSID. So I named it for the lab, but I technically could have named it anything I wanted under here. All right. Now this is WPA2, so it's got a PSK. Everything else I'm not really playing with right now. I'll get into deeper discussions and you know different videos. Um, and then once you create this, it's obviously enabled. Make sure you enable it. That is not that is not the last thing that you need to do. So now you have to go to your operation profile. And when you connect your AP by default, it creates this operation profile by default. So what you have to do is you go in here. Now, by default, it says any SSID that's tunneled, you would automatically broadcast. So I gave, I said I wanted to control it a little bit for this AP. So I said manual. And then you get to select the SSIDs you want to advertise or broadcast out of that AP. So there's a 2.4 gigahertz range and then your 5 gigahertz range. Right, you can say manual for both. You hit the SSID and then you hit OK. Now, once you do that, it will broadcast the SSID and then you join. Once you join, as you can see, that's the Florida client there. If I wanted to really get deep into this, go like acid details, and this is the stuff I kind of do like about Florida you can go deep into here and see, like, okay, what is the you know, details of this asset. What is it right from when you see the client? So this is from a logging standpoint. I can go to logs and see the forwarding traffic. I don't directly from the asset. I don't have to go into reports and then forwarding traffic. It tells me everything right here, right? So you get a lot of detail, you know, at a click of a button with forwarding it. They make it very easy to just get to where you got to go, view what you got to view, and then, you know, take an action if you need to. Like, I can quarantine it if I want to. I can disassociate it immediately right off of there. Or I can do a packet capture directly from this asset information, which, which is, again, I think it's really cool uh, for forwarding it. They, got, they definitely got their, got that right. Then, I mean, that's, that's really it for now that I'm going to show you. I think as I keep messing around with the security fabric stuff, um, I'm going to find more and more cool stuff, and I'm going to make more and more videos about it. If you guys already know some cool stuff that you want to point me to and have me test out in the lab, you know, put it in the comments, man. I'm not going to sit here and say I know everything about Fortinet. That is, that's not my, you know, primary skill set. It's like my tertiary skill set, really. Um, so I'm willing to learn if someone knows more about Fortinet than I do. All right, just put it in the comments. Hey, here's a link. Go check this out. All right. This is Don from Padlock Technologies. If you haven't done it already. Please do not forget to share, comment, like, and subscribe to the channel. I do cool stuff like this all the time. I'm always testing out new technologies, you know, even AI stuff that I'm probably going to start showing you guys pretty soon, like just AI products in general, stuff that I use to take notes and all that kind of good stuff to help you with studying. So please subscribe to the channel. Hope you like this one. Thank you and have a nice day. Thank <laughs> you.